This hearing is convened by the Metro Board of Directors to gather public comments on proposed changes to the Congress Heights Metro Station located in Washington, D.C. This is our agenda tonight. We will begin with some background information, then move to describing the proposed changes, followed by an overview of the protocol for commenting. We will then hear public comments and discuss next steps. The general plans and environmental evaluation for these changes are available online at wamata.com forward slash plans and projects. Two copies are also available in the hallway at the registration table. Notice of this hearing was published in the Washington Post and ads were placed in El Tiempo, Washington Informer, and on social media. The hearing notice was also sent to all local governments and other organizations within the compact zone, as well as posted at WMATA.com. There are three ways to provide comments at this evening's hearing, in person, via Teams, or over the phone. If you're with us in person and would like to provide testimony, please see the staff at the registration table if you have not already put your name on the list of speakers. For those of you who have pre-registered and joined via Teams, we ask that you remain muted with your camera off until you're called on to speak. And those of you participating via telephone, if you'd like to provide testimony, please press star five. This will let us know to call on you when it's your turn to speak. Until then, please mute yourself by pressing star six. When it's your turn to speak, you can press star six again. Public officials will be allowed five minutes to provide comments and everyone else will be allowed three minutes each. Extra time will be given for translation if needed. If you have copies of your testimony to distribute in person, please hand them to staff at the registration table. I'd also like to note that tonight's hearing is being broadcast live via YouTube on the Metro Forward YouTube channel and will be archived there after the hearing concludes. I now call on Mr. Segerlin for the staff presentation. Thank you, Ms. Worth. The purpose of the hearing tonight is to obtain input on the following changes to, uh, to the transit facilities at the Congress Heights Metro Station. Relocation of the bus loop and kiss and ride facilities to enable the extension of 13th Street Southeast. Reduction of the kiss and ride capacity to eight spaces and the addition of a new signal at the bus loop exit on to Alabama Ave Southeast to improve safety. Currently, these facilities support approximately 445 bus customers transferring between bus and rail services on an average weekday at the Congress Heights Metro Station and less than one paid parking transaction from the Kiss and Ride daily. For context, the Congress Heights Metro Station serves between 1,700 to 2,400 customers each week at, weekday in the decade prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. As of August 2023, ridership has recovered to around 1,200 customers each weekday and has jumped to 1,700 customers in the past few weeks, showing strong recovery. Before discussing the changes further, let me give some context or background about how we got to this meeting today. The Congress Heights Metro Station opened in 2001, and in 2012, the St. Elizabeth's East Campus Master Plan and Design Guidelines were adopted that proposed the creation of a street grid by extending 13th Street Southeast to Alabama Ave 
through the existing metro station bus loop, which you can see as a black arrow on the image on the right. The purpose of this improvement is to create a gateway to the St. Elizabeth's East Campus as it grows into a vibrant mixed use neighborhood center with more than 4 million square feet of new development. Then in 2020, that idea took a major step forward when the District of Columbia authorized funds for the 13th Street extension and reconfiguration of the transit facilities that we're discussing in this hearing. Subsequently, in 2021, the District of Columbia adopted an update to the comprehensive plan further elaborating on the goals in the St. Elizabeth's East Master Plan and highlighting new desires to use the Metro property for development in a way that provides a stronger sense of identity for the Congress Heights neighborhood. In support of that goal, Metro in 2022 sold some of its property at the South Metro Station entrance for residential and commercial development, which is highlighted on the map in a purple square on the bottom right. Later in 2022, the District of Columbia proposed a new library at the north entrance to the Metro Station that would be constructed inside the future bus loop, which we will highlight in the subsequent slides. In the time since, Metro has been coordinating with the Deputy Mayor's Office for Economic Development on the design for this project, and in 2023 received board approval to hold a compact hearing on the proposed changes to the transit facilities that are needed to support the District of Columbia's land use, housing, and economic development goals. On this slide, we'll cover those proposed changes to the transit facilities, covering aspects of access and capacity, as well as provide a summary of key points for our environmental evaluation. Metro proposes to reconfigure the existing bus loop and kiss and ride lot. This reconfiguration will support redevelopment and revitalization of the historic St. Elizabeth's East Campus, better integrate the Metro station into the fabric of the surrounding community and provide an improved customer experience at the Metro station entrance. These actions will also help to grow Metro's ridership and will be funded and constructed by the District of Columbia. The most significant change to the transit facilities involves the creation of the 13th Street extension to Alabama Ave, which will be constructed through the existing bus loop entrance, as you can see on the image on the right. As a result, the bus loop will be reconstructed into a street light extension to Sycamore Drive connecting to Alabama Ave, but being accessible in that portion by buses only. This format will significantly reduce the bus facility footprint and the number of vehicular lane crossings for pedestrians and bicyclists, making the station easier to navigate and improving safety. A new traffic signal is also proposed to be installed at the new bus loop exit onto Alabama Ave. And this will ensure that buses can safely make left turns out of the bus facility. The new bus loop will also include nine bays, which is the same capacity that exists today and can accommodate potential future increases in bus service. As a result of this new configuration of the bus loop, land will become available to support the proposed public library and the creation of an enhanced public plaza space around the Metro Station entrance. The existing Kiss and Ride facility will be removed and relocated onto uh, Alabama, or excuse me, onto 13th Street and designed as a curbside facility with pickup and drop off spaces. There will also be some spaces on Alabama Avenue. Regarding the capacity, the proposal is to reduce the capacity from 
two or two eight spaces, which aligns with pickup and drop off demand patterns and includes some additional capacity to accommodate future growth in households uh, in the station's park shed that may result in increased pickup and drop off demand. The supporting data and analysis behind this is included in the environmental evaluation posted on Metro's website. In this evaluation, it was identified that there were few paid transactions in the Kiss and Ride facility using the park mobile system, um, but that there was unpaid parking activity occurring in this area, ranging from 10 to 25 vehicles daily. These vehicles were observed to remain for extended periods of time, exceeding two hours to more than 12 hours in duration, including some overnight parking. With the proposed reduction in the kiss and ride capacity, those customers seeking daily or longer term parking options will be directed to use the park and ride facilities at Southern Ave or Anacostia Metro stations, which are the next stations on the green line in either direction or other on-street and off-street parking options that may be created after the construction of the new street grid. As for private van shuttles um, that may want to pick up and drop off at the metro station, they will be able to use a dedicated space within the Kiss and Ride facility. Metro's Kiss and Ride standards allow any private shuttle up to 35 feet in length to use the facility without a permit. Finally, as part of the compact hearing, staff have prepared an environmental evaluation for the project to assess any potential impacts and to identify opportunities to minimize or to mitigate them. This analysis identifies whether there are impacts to transportation, stormwater, open space, air quality, noise, or other community or environmental features that directly result from Metro's proposed changes to the transit facilities only. In this case, the reconfiguration of the bus loop and the reduction of kiss and ride spaces and not any anticipated future development on our site or surrounding properties. The District of Columbia will lead any evaluation process for those activities um, when those projects apply. Regarding transportation, it is anticipated that reconfiguring the bus loop will actually redistribute bus movement over multiple intersections and will have some improvement on traffic congestion. Relocating the kiss and ride uh, with a lower capacity will also generate less traffic vehicular trips on Alabama Ave and better align the facility with pickup and drop off demand overall. Reconfiguring the bus and the kiss and ride facilities will also improve safety for pedestrians and bicyclists because there will be fewer vehicular crossings for them once they access the metro property and are trying to reach the station entrance. During construction, an interim operations plan, sometimes called a maintenance of traffic plan, will be established to ensure access for all travel modes to the Congress Heights Metro Station is always provided throughout the project. Then regarding air quality, noise, and stormwater, there are no permanent impacts anticipated as a result of the transit facilities changes. However, there may be some minor temporary impacts during construction, like dust, equipment, noise, or sediment and erosion. These will be mitigated by following typical construction mitigation techniques and following the District of Columbia's requirements for construction operations. This concludes my presentation and I'll turn the floor back over to Ms. Worth to go over the procedures for tonight's hearing. Thank you, Mr. Segerlin. Briefly, I will cover the procedures that we will follow um, during this hearing. As noted earlier, we are accepting comments three ways at this hearing, in person, via Teams, and over the phone. 
For those of you here in person, you can start making your way towards the podium once your name is called. However, if you need a microphone brought to you, please wave your hand when your name is called so we can see you and we'll bring you one. For those of you who have pre-registered and joined via Teams, we ask that you remain muted with your camera off until you're called on to speak. Once you've given your testimony, you can log off Teams and watch the rest of the hearing on YouTube. And those of you participating via telephone, press star five if you want to provide comments. When it's your turn to speak, we'll announce the last four digits of your phone number. Until you are called on, please mute yourself by pressing star six. When it's your turn to speak, you can press star six again to unmute. Public officials will be allowed five minutes to provide comments, and everyone else will be allowed three minutes each. Extra time will be given for translation if needed. We have a timer that will count down how much time you have left to speak. It will give you a warning beep when you have 20 seconds left and will beep continuously when your time is up. The timer is important because we want to make sure everyone has equal time to provide their comments. We ask that you stay within your allotted time to ensure that we can hear from everyone who wants to provide testimony. In addition to the opportunity to speak at this evening's hearing, Metro also welcomes further comment on the proposed changes. There are two ways to provide comment online and by mail. Comments must be received by 5 p.m. on Thursday, October 5th, 2023. Online comments can be submitted through the Congress Heights project page, which can be found at wamata.com forward slash plans and projects. Once there, you may type comments and upload letters or other documents. You can mail comments to Office of the Secretary, SECT, S-E-C-T, 2E, WMATA, Post Office Box 44390, Washington, D.C., 20026-4390. Please reference Congress Heights public hearing and the subject line. Comments must be received not postmarked by Thursday, October 5th, 2023, in order to be, included, to be included in the hearing record. Your comments will become part of the public record that will be reviewed by the Metro Board of Directors. Changes to what was presented here tonight may be proposed in response to testimony received and subsequent staff analysis. I will note that this public hearing process is unable to address any comments outside the scope of this docket. Those, those include comments on size, mix or design of buildings or future joint development projects, land use matters, service complaints and fares. Please note that profanity will not be tolerated during this public meeting. For those of you participating online, I would also ask that you mute yourself and turn your camera off when you're not speaking. And for those providing testimony that may be watching the hearing on another device, please make sure that your device is muted when you're giving testimony to avoid feedback. I want to take a moment to recognize that this is where we listen to you. This is your opportunity to comment on the proposal and we are here to listen. So we won't be able to answer questions during your testimony. Before you begin your remarks, please state your name and the organization you rep represent, if any. Please note that all statements, including any personal information such as name, email address, address, or telephone number you provide in this statement are releasable to the public upon request and may be posted on Metro's website without change, including any personal information provided. 
The public comment period, again, will close on Thursday, October 5th, 2023. Staff anticipates releasing the draft staff report to the Metro website in November. Once the staff report is released to the public, those of you who have provided comments will have the opportunity to review the report to ensure that we captured your comments accurately. That review and comment period will close two weeks after the draft staff report is posted. Staff anticipates that the final staff report will be submitted to the Board of Directors for acceptance in January. So now that we have all that background out of the way, it's time to call the first witness. Um, we'll begin with those on Teams and then go through those joining in person and via phone until everyone who wants to provide testimony has that opportunity. So with that, our first speaker via Teams is Brenda Richardson. I'm the Friends of Parkland Turner Library and a Ward 8 resident. When I was appointed as a member of the DC Public Library Board, the district charged us with transforming the system as a result of the board, director, and staff's commitment, the DC library system has become one of the highest performing systems in the country with state-of-the-art, world-renowned libraries. During my tenure as a trustee, one of the decisions that we approved was to close the original Parkland Turner kiosk and replacing it with a storefront library across the street in a small shopping area. Now, WMATA has a wonderful opportunity to partner with the district in a very special way by continuing to work together with the DC Public Library to transform the library experience in the Congress Heights community. The community has been waiting for a standalone state-of-the-art library for many years. Mayor Bowser has made a commitment to see this through for the Ward 8 community. The Congress Heights community has already shown that it, it is already a vibrant community that deserves the use of a beautiful full service library that is easily accessible on the WMATA site. Replacing the Parkland Turner kiosk with its current storefront significantly increased library use in this area. I am pleased to share that now Parkland Turner Library is one of the busiest libraries per square foot in the city. I am confident that the use of the library will continue to grow in a full, full size location at the Congress Heights Metro Station. It is the perfect location uh, for our library. Finally, it is important to note that is it is not only what the library builds that is important, but how they have ensured that the new libraries welcome everyone. In communities across the district that have gotten new full service libraries, we have seen that they embrace the entire community. They are not only for the people who have newly arrived, nor are they for the people who have always been there. Libraries are a place that is an equalizer for a community. It allows people to use the space and resources that best suit them. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we're going to move, move to our in-person speakers. We will start with Robert Clark, followed by Ralph Nelson. But first, Robert Clark. Hi, great. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Clark, and I am a uh, private citizen. I'm a resident here of uh, St. Elizabeth's East, and I first want to thank Metro for this public hearing and for giving us, um, especially the residents of this vibrant community, the chance to provide our feedback to your great presentation. So um, I've been here for about three months now, and uh, I'm very excited by the proposed changes that you put forward. I think improving pedestrian access to the metro station entrances would significantly improve the um, 
the ease of access and quality of life, I think, for the residents here. Uh, the only concerns that I have are really more thinking forward. Uh, so this area being home to the entertainment sports arena, having a new hospital coming in, not to mention the fact that there's new housing that's being built and therefore more residents that will continue to go in here. Uh, I'm curious what sort of developments um, are going to be made in the future to kind of accommodate this increased population and usage. Um, and while I understand that you cannot answer the question, the recommendation that I'm putting forward is just um, if there's a way to either um, kind of either put more infrastructure such as footbridges or something um, like as funding would allow maybe a state, another station interest on the St. Elizabeth East campus itself, I think this would help kind of mitigate the conflicts that can come when you have a large number of pedestrians who are leaving the station entrance, having to cross multiple intersections to either go to the entertainment and sports arena or just go home. Um, again, I think probably in about three or four years, we'll, we'll know kind of to the extent as you know, how the trend in the population is going, but uh, very excited what I've seen so far and you know, just thank you for listening to your feedback. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Ralph Nelson. Ralph Nelson. All right. Okay. And we have one caller on the phone. They don't want. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, is there anyone else, that's all that we have on our list, is there anyone else in this room who wishes to provide testimony? Oh, yes. Oh, you can come right up and uh, share your name and if you're associated with any organization. Uh, sure, my name is Amanda Beal and I'm a commissioner in 8C. 8C08, and so I brought this comment up the first time we met, but I did want to make a recommendation that we not encourage parking on St. Elizabeth's campus. As the gentleman before me spoke, we expect an increase in this area uh, population, and there are, are already <laughs> issues with parking from residents that live at St. Elizabeth. And so we want to consider the hospital. We have Bard High School, which will increase over the years, maybe in staff. And so I don't want to uh, encourage non-DC residents who park at Congress sites because it's free to take the train to park in resident parking. So my biggest concern is the resident parking and then also enforcement of uh, the bus lanes up Alabama Avenue. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else present in the room who would like to provide comments or testimony? All right, um, and there's, is there anyone on the phone who wishes to provide testimony tonight? So please press star five to be put in the speaker's queue. All right, it looks like we don't have anyone at this time. So this hearing is now concluded. As a reminder, we'll be accepting written testimony until 5 p.m. on Thursday, October 5th, 2023. Testimony can be submitted online at wmata.com forward slash plans and projects, all one word. Then navigate to the Congress Heights project page. Testimony can also be sent via U.S. mail to Office of the Secretary, WMATA, S-E-C-T-2-E, P.O. Box 44390, Washington, D.C., 20026-4390. All mail testimony must be received, not postmarked, by 5 p.m. on Thursday, October 5th, 2023. As a reminder, a video recording of this hearing will be posted on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Metro Forward if you'd like to view it to help with developing written testimony. 
which again must be received by Metro by 5 p.m. Thursday, October 5th, 2023. Thank you again for participating in this evening's hearing. Have a good evening.